Welcome to a day that begins with a distinguished panel of international experts and a patient advocate discussing the challenges and successes involved in establishing equal access to health care. The American Society for Clinical Pathology and the World Association of Societies of Pathology and Laboratory Medicine have combined their scientific resources, enhancing the education, international scope, and leadership for the entire laboratory team. On October 21st, the Global Access to Healthcare panelists focused on cervical cancer screening and treatment. Their perspectives may change how you view global healthcare during an unprecedented annual meeting. Let's start our remarkable journey. On the third of four perfect days in Las Vegas, the spotlight shines on ASCP's sustained efforts for global outreach. Through its long-term partnership with the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, ASCP has become a leader in improving laboratory practices in Africa and beyond. Science is front and center with sessions covering the latest discoveries in molecular diagnostics and personalized medicine. Tomorrow, Dr. Rebecca Johnson delivers the first ever Michelle D. Rabel Lecture named in honor and memory of this extraordinary educator for pathology residents. Additionally, judges select several winners in the best poster and oral presentation contests. This is a challenging healthcare environment. Things are changing in terms of technology. Uh, we're also challenged in terms of the social and the economic aspects of how we deliver healthcare. And this is a time of change which is more rapid than at any time in all of our history. PAP testing is very difficult to set up in low resource settings. It just, after 50 years, it just hasn't happened. Teaching somebody a standardized molecular test is much simpler. And there are now lower cost tests that are, are very robust and very easy to train. So you only need a high school level education. And I've seen this in China and Nigeria and Nicaragua and India. So we can really, we can really get cervical cancer screening out to much broader uh, coverage using HPV tests. It's very important to get the word out for cervical cancer prevention because this is the cancer we can prevent. This is a cancer that we know the cause, so we know the culprits behind it. We have a test to detect it. We also have a vaccine to prevent it. So for me, it's a no-brainer. You always hear from the medical community and advocates about preventing cancer. This is a cancer that we can prevent, so we need to put stigmas and stereotypes behind when it comes to HPV and really get in there and start preventing cervical cancer on a global issue because this is a cancer that we don't have to find a cure or we don't have to find tools to test it. We have them right now so we need to make sure that there's access for all women and prevent this cancer now, not tomorrow, not in the future, right now. ASCP really makes resident life easier. Um, they do this in a number of ways through uh, heavily discounted educational courses, uh, free online access to our journal for ASCP, the AJCP, uh, and large discounts at meetings as well. Uh, the opportunity to be here at the annual meeting and see amazing speakers. So the volunteering and networking opportunities within AACP are vast and um, are great for career development and advancement. Finally, AACP is an altruistic society. Uh, members, uh, and staff, volunteers are just amazing to work with. And you find that it's a continuing relationship throughout your career very sustainable and I, I know that I will be involved for years and years to come. This year's Arthur Purdy Stout Society lecture focuses on the prospects and promises for practicing personalized medicine. Personalized medicine has the propensity to dramatically transform the way medicine is being practiced in every conceivable facet of the discipline. Listen, ASCP is a patient-centric organization, so core to our mission, okay, is to improve patient care by keeping pathologists and laboratory professionals abreast of the latest development in progressive science. This is what we do, and this is how we fulfill our mission and our vision of being a patient-centric organization. Our team in Washington, D.C. are invaluable, but we have our members. We have members that are throughout the United States um, that are involved in issues, whether it's state legislation issues, whether it's licensing issues. We have a, a huge network of individuals um, who actually are feeding information to us. 
In the same regard, we feed information back out to our members. And we've had recently advocacy calls to our members where we've identified issues, asked them to get involved, and no surprise, our ASCP members rose to the occasion and responded. In our day-to-day -day, um, work, we are uh, working across disciplines and we're working with pathologists and shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder with our residents and fellows. And I think that to, pro to provide that kind of a diversity of experience at the annual meeting is, is uh, very clear and very important. It's a very great experience for us to be doing more than just exhibiting and having a booth here. The hands-on uh, the future learning lab that we're actually part of because we can actually show our audiences and, and customers a, a true uh, a procedure and how easy it could, it could work and, and, um, and it could work on their lab from beginning to the end and um, having them relate better and, and play with the instruments and have a hands-on experience and that's really important. I think this conference is perfect because we just have the right people that connects really the best for our products. And our challenge is to make 2012 as dynamic as we've made uh, 2011 and really, again, to really emphasize that clinical team.